Around 3,000 years ago, approximately 1,000 BC, we're in the hill country of Judah, just south of Hebron. And in this area, it is time for the annual sheep shearing festival. And so a woman named Abigail, along with all of the women in her village, are preparing a huge feast for all of the shepherds, the whole village, to celebrate the shearing of the last sheep. Now, it's been a good year because the winter rains have brought lots of grass for the sheep to eat, and Abigail's husband, Nabal, had about 3,000 sheep and another 1,000 goats, which brings him over three tons of wool. So it's been a great year, and they're ready for a celebration. So in this video, I want to tell you all about what life would have been like for Abigail and the other women in her village so that you can feel like you've really walked a mile in her footsteps. I'm Samantha Corcoran, and I run the site GeoLogos. I love learning about the culture and the history and the geography of a Bible story, and I'd love to share that with you in this video. Abigail lived with her husband, Nabal, in the town of Carmel. Now, don't confuse this with Mount Carmel, which is in northern Israel. Uh, this is actually south of Hebron, and you can see on the map that it was connected by a local road all the way up to Hebron. And that is where we get our distance for Abigail's walking challenge. Remember, we picked seven miles for this challenge because it's approximately uh, 12 kilometers or seven miles from Carmel up to Hebron. Additionally, there is an elevation difference from Carmel to Hebron. It's about 1,200 feet in rise going from Carmel up to Hebron. And so I wanna challenge you in this walking challenge, put a 3% incline on your treadmill or go walk a big hill and experience what it might've been like to walk these hills like Abigail did. Now, Israelite villages were built on hilltops for safety and security, and Carmel was no different. Villages like this would have had around 400 people living there together in little houses just like this one. So you can see this is a typical Israelite house, and we know this from archaeology. Uh, they would have lived in a nuclear household with the members of their family and their extended family. Uh, together there cooperating for the family business. So on this day to prepare for the sheep shearing festival, Abigail, as the COO of her household, has to organize everyone to produce all that's needed to celebrate this feast. And so we read later on in the chapter about the meal, the feast that she takes to David and his men. So we already know that she's prepared at least 400 servings of food. And we know which foods that she prepared. It included roasted grain, uh, loaves of bread, which actually would have been a flat bread, uh, baked here uh, at the communal oven, clusters of raisins, fig cakes, which would have been like the ancient equivalent of a fruit cake, and sheep meat that's already been prepared and, and likely roasted. Now, as far as turning the sheep and goat products into edible and wearable form, Abigail would have had to organize all of that process as well. Now, most likely this would have been done before the festival. So ahead of time, they would have taken the sheep milk, the goat milk, turned it into cheese and yogurt, and they also likely would have taken all of that wool and processed it uh, into skeins of yarn and they also would have dyed the yarn as well. And they also would have processed lanolin from the sheep, that's the oil, right, uh, to use for balms and ointments, um, cosmetics, uh, and for first aid. So now that you know a little bit more about Abigail and what a day in her life might have been like, I want you to think back to Psalm 23. It is not the green pastures that you picture in Psalm 23. This is actually what David had in mind when he wrote Psalm 23, is this kind of terrain. You'll notice it's very rocky, very dry. They definitely get less than 24 inches of rainfall per year. And so their, their rain, their water, uh, all comes off of the Mediterranean. They get a lot of humidity and it, it condenses between the rocks. And so when you see sheep on these hills, you think, what are they even eating? It doesn't look like there's much. 
but that small amount of condensation causes little grasses and shrubs to grow. And so God provides in the wilderness. In your daily life, think about Abigail and how sometimes things might seem like it's empty and there's nothing there for you. Uh, you might be in your own wilderness struggling. Think about Psalm 23 and this landscape and how God still provides, even if it's not how we expect. So I want you to look for God's provision in your life, whether you are in a lush green pasture or in the wilderness, and praise God for his provision.